Hello, come on in, ladies and gentlemen, come on in, don't be shy. This is the Coffin and Cradle, the virtual pub at the end of the world, and you're welcome to spend the evening with your host, Mark David Welsh, for another edition of the hit award-winning web show, It's Five O'Clock Somewhere. Yep, and I say award-winning because this week we have won the award for the best Friday night-based web show with an old git sitting on his lounge floor talking about stouts and porters award. And I'm looking forward to receiving that through the post and I'll show you it next week. I'll put it right up there on the wall next to my PhD in quantum mechanics and cult cinema, which is a bit of a niche qualification, I'm sure you'll agree, but very important. Obviously, some people say these awards aren't really valid because I've awarded them to myself, but I prefer to just ignore such negativity and turn to the beer. And this week, we've got four new stouts and porters to try. Well, three, really, because number one, I have actually tried before, but only at beer festivals and off the tap in pubs, uh, not out of the bottle. And I do have to say, it's been very good which is one of the reasons why I wanted to include it. But I, I, don't ever think, I don't think I've ever had it out of the bottle as far as I can remember. And what is it? Well, ladies and gentlemen, it's the Orkney Dragon Head Stout. Yes, from the wilds of the Scottish Isles. Now, it's only 4%, and I think I'm right in saying that makes it the weakest I have ever tried on this show. I think... Apart from that, maybe 4.4 was the weakest. But, as I've said before, it's not about the strength for me. It's about the flavour and it's about the taste and it's about the drinking experience. So, let's open it up and give it a go. As I say, I have had this uh, many times, well, many times, several times at various festivals, and that brings to mind the sad news, or inevitable news, really, that the Norwich Beer Festival of 2020 has been cancelled. Um, I can't say I mean, anyone is going to be surprised by that decision. Uh, it makes sense. The idea of... It's, it's held in St Andrew's Hall, which, if you're not a resident of Norwich, you're not going to be familiar with, but it's a very old building indeed, very beautiful, a superb location to have a beer festival. But if you're going to socially distance inside there, you're probably not going to get enough people through the door, let alone any other issues. Because um, normally it's absolutely bloody packed. You, you know, some days you really can't hardly get in there um, or, or get around because there's such a press of people. Um, it's great. They never let it get too bad, though, having said that. Oops. <laughs> Good stuff. Um, but yeah, so it's been cancelled this year. Most of the glasses I've got here are from that beer festival, as you could probably see. So it's a shame. But having said that, I think it's sensible and I can see why they did it. Um, so we're going to try the Orkney Dragon Head Stout as an opener. It's a very nice, subtle aroma. Let's see what we think. Cheers, ladies and gentlemen. I hope you had a good week. Hope you're going to have a better weekend. Mm, that's nice. That's one of those beers that you get the liquid in your mouth and it sort of almost seems to, you don't have to do anything. It sort of just drains, <laughs> drains into your tongue and down your throat, kind of like, like, it, like it soaks in almost. It's so smooth. Um, that's the best way I can put it, I think. And it's got a really nice burnt aftertaste. And so far, I'm certainly not disappointed with this one. Mmm, that is so relaxing. Mmm, -hmm. that's very nice. I'm enjoying that, as you may have gathered. Let's have a look at the tasting notes briefly. Uh, dark, intense, full flavoured, brimming over with rich roast malt and roast barley flavours. Bitter chocolate aroma, roast coffee and spicy dark fruits are complemented by a complex bitter blend of hop varieties. And I can't argue with that, because that all sounds great and it is a good beer. Yeah. That's a very good start to the evening. 
that's really nice. Mm. I'm liking that. I thought I would, because <laughs> of my previous experience with the beer, and I, I'm sure it wasn't going to be markedly inferior just because it was in the bottle. Um, so I was kind of expecting I was going to enjoy it, and I certainly am at the moment, um, and will continue to do so, because I can't see that's... Uh, I'm going to change my opinion on that, really, um, because it's so good. I'm going to have a little bit more, actually. I know I should probably move on to the second one, but... The other outstanding thing about it, of course, is it's only 4%. So you could have a hell of a session on it and not really worry about it. I mean, some of the best ones I've had in this survey, they're pretty hefty. And you think, well, you couldn't really have more than two or three or you'd probably wake up on the floor. Or if you were out, you'd probably fall over. Not that I've ever done that, of course. <laughs> <clears throat> um, yeah, in fact, actually, you could probably tell from the shape of my nose that uh, I've fallen over in the past because <laughs> that uh, did get a bit dented once, which we won't go into. Um, but yes, not on Dragon Head Stout, that's for sure. So I really like that. That's really cool. Um, it's a great way to start the session. Really pleased with that. I'd recommend that already anyway, if you're a stout lover. Um, whether it will go through to the second stage of my survey remains to be seen because only the absolutely exceptional ones are getting put through. So only the ones I'm absolutely nuts about. And there have only been seven so far out of 76. So <laughs> it's a pretty high bar. So this is actually 77 to 80 tonight um, as I approach the treble figures, which is fairly amazing. Um, but yes, so would it go forward? I'm, uh, I'm not sure. I wouldn't say it's definite yes, not yet, but certainly not a definite no. It's certainly a decision I'm going to have to consider. And that involves a lot more drinking, which is, you know, unfortunate, but there you are. Mm. <laughs> yes, I love that. I love the way it seems to soak into your tongue. I know that probably doesn't make a lot of sense, but that's the way only way I can describe it. <laughs> okay, so that's the first beer of the evening, and what a great start. So we're going to move on to number two. Now, this is a brewery I've never tried. I'd never heard of them until I got the Beers of, of Europe website up and was doing the order, which I did a couple of weeks ago. So I didn't know anything about them at all. Um, and... Basically, I don't actually, when I order beers off there, I don't do any research about the brewer, the breweries or anything, really. It's just if I can get enough dark beers to make up the 60 quid so I can get free shipping, that's what I do. So I don't really pay any attention to it other than the fact that they're stouts or they're porters. That's my only, that's my only uh, criteria for making an order. Um, so I wasn't aware of this brewery at all. But it happens, to, it happens to be that they're very local to me. Or fairly local. Not the closest one we've had in this survey, but pretty close. Now, who is it? Well, it's the Ampersand Brewery. Um, and this beer is, I think it's called Kokow? Cow Cow? I'm not sure how you pronounce it. C-O-C-O-W. Um, it's a chocolate and milk stout. It's 4.8%. And they're based... On the border of Norfolk and Suffolk, and I live in Norfolk, um, it's it's quite a few miles away, uh, but not in terms of like if you're used to American distances, they will, they'd probably think it was just down around the corner. Um, but yeah, they're based on the border of Norfolk and Suffolk. Um, by the looks of it in the middle of nowhere, but then there's not a lot of building down on that border. It's, it's apart from a few population centres, a lot of it is quite sparsely populated. There's one great pub down there. If you're ever down that way, near Beckles, Bungie Way, uh, the Gelderston Locks is a wonderful pub. Um, you, you have to go by car, and it does involve driving down a very, very narrow country lane with no... It's not a proper road. There's no pavements or sidewalks or anything of that nature. It's just a rough track, basically. And if you if someone's coming the other way, well, there's no room to pass, so someone's going to have to back up probably for a few minutes at least. It's a very long and um, sort of isolated uh, place to get to. Um, 
which I didn't say very well, but yeah, you get the idea. But it's a huge pub on a like almost a village green by uh, by the river there, and it's beautiful. And uh, there's nothing else around there, um, and it's great. I went to a folk festival there one afternoon, and that was beautiful day, absolutely wonderful. I had some great acoustic acts playing. Wonderful summer's day out that one. Always meant to do it again, never did, or haven't done so far. Perhaps I should put. That's probably a better way of looking at it, isn't it? Be positive. Um, so I don't know anything about the brewery apart from what's in the tasting notes. Basically, it's on a farm. Um, it's a family farm, and they diversified into brewing and winemaking. They still do some sheep farming, I believe, and I think it's a father and son. I'm not entirely sure about that. Um, but they've been quite successful, but only in a very local sense by the look of it. Um, they've got beers in casks and kegs in local pubs. So I guess this is kind of like their their um, export for the rest of the world is in cans. Um, so uh, the tasting notes say it's rich decadent stout with big flavours of bitter chocolate tempered by milk sugars. Subtle undertones of dark caramel and coffee give a great depth of flavour and keep the sweetness balanced whilst the cocoa nibs. Ah, oh, cocoa. Ah making sense now. The cocoa nibs provide that unmistakable dark chocolate finish. Well, bloody sounds good, I've got to say. They've, they've done a great description there, if nothing else. Let's hope the beer makes it, eh? Oh, it's an absolute scorcher today, by the way. I don't know how the weather is where you are. Now, I don't normally pay much attention to the weather, to be honest, but it's hot here. I've, had to, I've actually got a big uh, air conditioning unit, um, which is a portable one, which I bought years ago. I, it's not on at the moment, simply because um, it makes so much noise, basically, and probably costs an awful lot to run, I would imagine. Um, but it really belts the cold air out, and I've been using it today because it's really hot. Um, and uh, I'm sitting right here facing the window, which you can't see, obviously, and it's a pure blue sky, absolutely beautiful outside. And of course, I'm in here. Well, it's not so bad. I've got beer. And what more do I need on a Friday night but a camera, an audience, and some beer? <laughs> um, but no, I've not actually been out yet. Um, getting to that stage, officially, we're supposed to. Oh, I'm going to give away when this is being filmed, aren't I? Uh, okay, well, officially, we're supposed to stop shielding today or yet the tomorrow. We don't have to shield anymore according to the government but then suddenly I understand they're making some they're tightening the lockdown from what they were going to do originally they're, they're reversing some decisions because of the second wave um, so they're actually taking some positive action possibly at the right moment instead of waiting several months before doing anything um, but anyway enough of that I'm gonna stop ranting on about politics on this show I'll get in trouble when I um, it's more about beer and that's what we're supposed to be facing. That's what we're supposed to be concentrating on. But I guess the, the world situation, it's a bit difficult not to discuss it in some ways. But let's return to the beer. That's the important thing. The cocao, the ampersand cocao. Is it any good? That's the question. Let's, let's have a look. Or more importantly, a smell and a taste. Well, that's okay. Nothing... Nothing more than a fairly standard stout aroma there, I would say. Uh, but more importantly, is the flavour. Keeping its head nicely. Very smooth. Very nice milky aftertaste. Nice texture. Mmm. First taste is favourably impressive. Not getting an awful amount of chocolate, although they did emphasise the chocolate in the tasting notes. Not getting huge amounts of that. Certainly not as much as some of the others I've tried. But it's a very nice pint. Two good ones to start the session. Yeah, very pleased with that indeed. 
Ampersand Brewery done a very good job with the old cocal there. Um, again, whether it goes forward to the next stage of my survey is going to be um, another matter, of course. We'll have to wait and see. But we'll move on to the third beer of the evening, and it's from our old friends at Eight Sales, because they seem to brew a lot of dark beer there. This is the fourth one I've had from them, um, and it's their Baltic Porter, and it's a hefty 6.9 in a nice big bottle. So that's what we like to see. Uh, obviously, I mentioned Baltic Porter last week as being an offshoot of the Imperial Stout style, um, which was obviously brewed in the Balkans as a reaction to the Russian uh, kind of feel that uh, the Imperial Stout has. This is only 6.9, which is a little bit on the weak side in comparison with how Imperial Stouts often are. Um, eight sales. Uh, they, so I say this is the fourth one I think I've had from them. Their Dams and Porter is very nice. I think that's the best one I've had from them. Um, but they're from um, Heckingham, which is a village in Lincolnshire, which by all accounts, from what I gather, is the um, windmill centre of Great Britain and possibly even of the Milky Way itself. They do like their windmills there. Apparently windmill fanciers move there from all over the world. They live, sleep, eat and make love to windmills, apparently. And they don't like people who don't like them. That's what I hear anyway. This is their Baltic Porter at 6.9. Let's give it a try. Hmm, that's unusual. Hmm, hang on. What's in the tasting notes for this one? That's... Hmm. Uh, well, uh, nothing really. Because basically I haven't copied them out. <laughs> I think I just saw it was Heckingham again and the eight sales and just thought I'd make some jokes about windmills and forgot to actually do the notes. <laughs> oh, that's stupid, isn't it? <clears throat> Because this has got a very strange flavour. It's unusual. I'm, yeah, getting rum and raisin, I think. Uh, maybe a little bit of chocolate. Yeah. Um, it's... It's a weird one because it's quite heavy in a sense, but it has, doesn't feel like it's the sort of thing that, as I've mentioned before, would suck all the energy out of you and put you on the sofa for a couple of hours in the afternoon if you had too much of it. It's quite a, a pleasant heaviness, a mellow kind of feel. Um, hmm. First, first taste, I wasn't too sure, but I think the more I'm having of it, the more I'm enjoying it. Certainly it's not for everyone. I would say some people really aren't going to like this, I think, because it is very different. In fact, I don't know why they've called it Baltic Porter and actually not called it Rum and Raisin Porter or something to give a bit more of a clue as to, as to what you're going to get. Mm, I do like it. Again, it's going to take some further investigation, as I think. To be fair, all three of these are because so far this is a very high standard week. It's very good. Um, normally, uh, the last few weeks, there's usually been a couple that I've really enjoyed and a couple not so much, but this one so far is really good. Three very good beers. Um, even if, well, how am I gonna place one of these in fourth for a start? That's a problem, because I've enjoyed all three. I think all three are pretty classy. And that's a nice big bottle from eight sales there. <laughs> Always helpful that. So we better move on to the last of the four. Can it come up to the standard of the first three? Well, this one is from our old friends in Belgium. They do like their dark beers in Belgium, don't they? And they do seem to like them in the 
western part of the country towards the border with France because not all the Belgian beers I've had in this survey f have come from that part of Belgium, but most of them do. <laughs> Some of them virtually are breweries that are virtually only a few miles from each other. This one isn't quite so um, quite so near the border, but it's still, uh, I think it's about half an hour south of Ostend, so not a million miles away from the coast, and again getting towards the Dunkirk kind of area and the, and the border with France. And uh, this one is the De Dole Special Extra Export Stout, and it's 9%. Um, and as I say, the only thing I know about the De Dole, if that's how you pronounce it, the De Dole Brewery, is that apparently that name means the Mad Brewers. Um, and I've got a bit of a note about them down here, I think, apart from that. Uh, just to say, yeah, it's it's a brew house that was originally, or dates from 1835 and uh, was active during that century, uh, but was apparently pretty derelict when it was bought by these the De Dole people in 1980. So and they've won awards, apparently, um, and the owner's won awards for his research into brewing history. So he's obviously a bit of a history buff. Yeah, um, I don't know really anything more about it than that. Uh, certainly no tasting notes. I've really been able to find that were anything other than very generic. It's 9%. It's got a lot to live up to with these other three. It really has. Um, oh, look at that. It's a bit lively. It does mention actually on the bottle that it's um, fermenting. Does it mention on the bottle? It mentions it somewhere, I'm sure, that it actually ferments in the bottle as well. So that's always a, that's always quite a good sign. And it's certainly lively. Look at that. That's nice. I like that. Yeah, getting the strength there in the aroma. But I don't think there's a very strong beer that doesn't have a strong aroma. I think it just goes with the strength. You you, you don't get around that, I, I think. Um, and obviously, the brewers have got other things to worry about than the aroma. So, the Didol Extra Special Export Stout. Special Extra Export Stout, even. Let's give it a go. Getting the strength with the aftertaste, not before that though. Quite subtle for a nine percenter. Hmm. It's a nice one, but I think it's going to suffer in comparison with the other three I've tried already. But it's early doors, let's face it. I've only just had a couple of gulps. Again, as I've said before, like a broken record, the strength overwhelms the flavour a little bit. It's not quite as obviously like that as some I've had, but again, I suppose it's, it's inevitable really. There are very few brews I've tried around the nine, 10 and above percent arena where you really get the flavour overrides the strength it just doesn't happen very often it's normally about the strength and this isn't a bad one by any means uh, I certainly don't think it's uh, it's very smooth that's certainly a very acceptable dark beer very nice stout it's just that it's struggling in comparison with the other three um, but way, and that's a really good range. That's a really high standard session. Um, as I said, I already said it, some of the others recently haven't been quite so consistent, but this one, yeah, it's good stuff. And um, 
it's going to be ranking these is going to be a little difficult i think the baltic porter is a bit of the um the loose cannon of the four um, whereas i think that my opinion on that one may change the more i drink it hmm. it's like that weird one, that weird belgian one i had last week if you've seen last week's show the zvet b Actually, I thought it was absolutely disgusting in my first, <laughs> my first mouthful. But by the end of the session, I was kind of getting, it was kind of bringing me around a bit. Still didn't do very well, but, yeah. Ooh. Right, so. Oh, let's talk about the t-shirt. Um, this is not a, a tour t-shirt for once. This is, as you've already noticed, a Witchwood Brewery t-shirt which I ended up with as a result of some kind of promotional offer. Um, I think I'd ordered some of their bottles online, I believe. Probably the Hobgoblin, which I love that. That's a really lovely beer. Really lovely dark beer. Not in this uh, survey, of course, because I've had it <laughs> quite a few times. Um, and their other beers are very good as well. And so I ended up with this T-shirt. Uh, for some reason... I think it was because it was the end of the offer. Um, they only had extra large left. So I ended up with basically this kind of like mini tent. Um, but it's actually proving very useful for this session because you can't see how fat I'm getting. Because, <laughs> uh, yeah, I was going to put on some uh, a tour one and uh, I thought, ah, oh, um, it's look, beginning to look a bit tight. <laughs> So I think I'm going to have to be a little bit more sensible, not about the, the beer particularly, but about the food, the carbs particularly, a lot of bread, a lot of rolls and bagels and stuff. So I think I'm going to have to start being a bit more um, careful about that. Uh, obviously, I'm not getting any exercise, but then again, to be honest, pre-lockdown, I didn't get a lot of exercise particularly. OK, I walked to work four times a week, there and back again, and that was a total of... I think almost, not quite, but almost three miles a day. So I, I guess that helped, but I think that's not far far enough to help a huge amount. I think you need to put an extra mile or two on that to really make a difference to things like weight um, and fitness. Uh, but yeah, I'm not getting anything now, obviously. I'm not doing anything apart from various exercises I have to do because of health issues. Um, yeah, so... Yeah, the pounds are beginning to pile on a little bit, I'm afraid. But then again, I've been here now for, oh, what is it now? I don't know, 784 days? <laughs> I don't know. Um, uh, I did work it out again the other day and I've just lost it. It's it's not, it's about four months. That's the easiest way of saying it. Um, so yeah, you'd have to expect the weight to um, come on a little bit if you're livering. Livering? Ooh living a very a far more sedentary lifestyle you've got to expect that and uh, yeah um i really need to sort that out <laughs> which obviously i'm going to do tonight by drinking a lot of stout so that's really sensible isn't it oh that orkney dragon head's a good one that's a good oh yeah it's again one of those ones with a very delayed aftertaste which is something i really enjoy I really do enjoy that. That's one of the particular uh, the particular delights I get from trying a lot of beers and stouts is that aftertaste kicking in just when you kind of like lulled into a false sense of security and you don't think anything more is going to happen and then bam, there it is. I love that. Oh, but yes, trying to rank these is going to be a bit tricky. Hmm. Now I'm going to clear up a couple of questions from previous episodes because, um, yeah, last week there was a beer that was described as having sour puckeriness. It was the Svet B, which I've already mentioned. And I was like, what the hell is that? And that is the most banal, inane explanation you could possibly think of. If something is really sour, it makes your lips pucker. So that is puckeriness. So yeah, that was really exciting to find that out. <clears throat> the other thing was, um, I think a beer a couple of weeks ago, it, it mentioned it had, um, I, I 
can't remember exact notes of s'mores s apostrophe m o r e s and i had no idea what that was well apparently according to the the, the wonderful internet it's s'mores if that's what if that's how you say it it's a sweet snack consisting of a chocolate bar and toasted marshmallows sandwiched between graham crackers I'm not sure graham would be very happy about that but there you go that's what it is and uh, I can't actually remember what beer it referred to now but it was just one of those things that it, some of these t times it happens when you look at tasting notes and you're just like um, okay I'm not sure what they're talking about I mean obviously they all mention the same things chocolate coffee uh, you know licorice sometimes um, it's kind of very standard sometimes and yet then you've obviously got some people who want to throw in something a little bit more bizarre to try and pique your interest uh, and but as I said half the time I don't know what it is that they're actually talking about but that's what s'mores is anyway and now we're going to do something that I should have done at the start of the show which actually went completely out of my head um, and just popped back in for no reason at all uh, so I'm going to uh, have a drink and we're going to edit here while I go, while I go and sort it out right <laughs> Now, if you're a long-time viewer of this show, <laughs> if there are any such people, you'll remember that at the very start of it, when I was doing the very early editions of the show, I was trying some international snacks along with my beer. Now, that kind of fell by the wayside after I placed an order for some from another part of the world, and they just didn't arrive. And this was literally more than three months ago. And I gave up on the idea of them ever getting here, obviously. Uh, I don't think I ever went, got a refund for them because basically it was, it's, it was peanuts money wise. Uh, it, did, it wasn't a lot of money at all. Uh, uh, but anyway, of course, they turned up the other day, didn't they? <laughs> About three months late. So I'm going to try some on camera. Um, they're down here out of shot. I have no idea what I'm going to get here. But I have got a guide. A guide came with them. Uh, well, a single piece of paper, basically, with very little written on it. And for that, uh, to read that, I'm going to need my glasses because... Um, Basically, I'm as blind as a bat. I normally wear glasses or have to wear something all the time. But obviously, when I film, I don't wear glasses. Not because of any vanity reasons, but because you get reflections in them. So um, I put contact lenses in to do this. But because my eyes are so, are so screwed, I can't actually read anything when I've got the lenses in. I can see things a long way away. I can see you. But I can't actually read anything. So I've got these um, rather wonderful folding glasses, which I'm going to put on at certain points so I can read the notes for these rather strange things. So first up, we're going to go for this. Um, I'm not actually sure what it is, of course, because um, that's half the fun of it. texture is not pleasant but it's got quite a nice flavor the flavors all right yeah very crispy what is it then because I have no idea so let's have a look at see what the uh, the notes say it's a rice cracker apparently <laughs> and it's sea urchin flavor so there you go no wonder I didn't recognize the flavor I, I can't recall I've ever eaten a sea urchin so it's not bad I wouldn't go overboard about it I wouldn't say I want another one but it ain't bad but I should wash it down with one of my beers now which one let's have a quick one of the uh, the strong one again Yeah. 
yeah, it's a little bit too much about the strength. Um, not a huge amount of flavour, but it has a nice aftertaste, which kind of is quite quite calming in a way. Hmm, it's not bad. Ooh, well, I can see some ranking problems approaching here. So before I do that, we'll have one more snack from this mystery country, which you'll never guess what it is. <coughs> And we'll try, um, what on earth is that? <laughs> okay, uh, we'll try this. <laughs> um, yeah, okay. Is there anything actually? Oh, it's a kind of, it's a lolly of some nature. <laughs> okay. Oh God, this, this could actually take ages. I'll have to do a lot of edits here, won't I? That one isn't even in the tasting notes, so I can't tell you anything about it apart from it was a lollipop and it was lime flavoured. Um, so that's it really on that. So after all that, I think we should come around to ranking the beers. <laughs> even though I am incredibly sticky um, everywhere now, so I need to get rid of that stickiness with some comparison drinking. <clears throat> Okay, I've got it. I'm ready to rank and um, fairly predictably, if you've already been, which you obviously have already been watching the rest of the video, I mean, who opens a video and sort of like clicks to like five minutes from the end just to get the ranking? That'd be the sort of same person who'd turn to the last page of a book, wouldn't it? I don't like those people. Anyway, uh, fourth place this week, although it's a perfectly decent pint, um, has got to be the uh, Dole, I can't remember what they're called, <laughs> dear. The De Dole uh, Special Extra Export Stout from Belgium. It's a decent one. Um, for a 9%er, it's uh, one of the better 9%ers I've had, I think. That's fair to say. Uh, but it, it suffers in comparison with the other three. I've said that several times already. So it's going to be fourth place for this one. Third place now. This is a bit awkward because third place is going to be the Eight Sales Baltic Porter because it is unusual and different. And on other weeks, I'm not saying it would have won a session maybe, but it would have been close. It's a very good point. It's unusual. I think a lot of people are going to either love it or hate it. Uh, it's unfortunate in a sense uh, of the competition that it's come up against two other beers that are really very good. Um, but yeah, I certainly enjoyed it. I think it's possibly the best eight sales one. That or the Damson Porter, one of the two. I'd certainly recommend both. But third place tonight. So that just leaves us with these two. And fairly unusually, the two weakest of the session. Now I'm going to have a quick comparison. I'm pretty sure how I'm going to put them, but let's have just one last go, just to be sure. Okay, it's fairly close, but in second place on this particular evening, for this particular session, it's the Ampersand Cacao. Cow cow? I still don't know how to say it. Cacao? Anyway, it's in second place. It's a nice smooth milk stout, chocolate and milk stout rather. It's very nice. Um, it doesn't quite make the next step to being exceptional. 
but it is a very nice pint and uh, certainly recommend it and if um, I come across any more brewers from the Ampersand brewery I'll be trying them because that's that's really nice so in a way it's a surprise because it is the weakest one of the four and that doesn't often turn out to be my favorite of a session in a way it's not a surprise because it's Orkney Dragonhead Stout and I've had it before and enjoyed it so that's not too shocking I knew it was going to be up the top um, unless that was an unbelievably exceptional selection um, but yeah this is the best for me of the four um, it's a really really excellent pint uh, very very quaffable obviously four percent means that you could have a hell of a session on it well you know <laughs> you'd end up with a bit of a headache if you had too many but uh, no you could have a very good session on it it's a very very good pint um, I no question about it every iteration I've had it in uh, basically at festivals off the pump in pubs and in the bottle here have all been great it's superb pint is it going forward to the next stage of my survey is the big question does it join the magnificent seven well let's have one last taste to make that decision And the answer is no. Just not quite. It's close, but not quite. <sighs> oh well, maybe one day I'll find the magnificent eighth one. But that day is not today. But that is a very, very high standard session. And I would recommend any of those drinks to stout drinkers. Definitely. You, I think they would get something out of all of those. Um, which I can't say most weeks. So that's it for today. Oh, one last thing, of course. In case you hadn't guessed, I'm sure you did, but in case you hadn't guessed, the um, sweets and candies I was trying were from the wonderful nation of Japan, um, which I have a semi-obsession with, um, mainly because due to my love of anime uh, and Godzilla. <laughs> Um, and not the American Godzilla because you know that's I'm sorry it's just not great is it you know it really isn't uh, the original Japanese movies particularly the 70s movies uh, you can't be a monster with a really really massive beer gut who does flying kicks while balancing on his tail you just can't beat it anyway um, enough of that so let's just wish everyone a really good week uh, I hope you're back with me next week for another session of this um, award-winning web show uh, <laughs> I'll have to make up some more awards I think some more credible ones possibly nah anyway have a good week I'll see you later um, stay safe and stay well cheers everybody Orkney Dragonhead, well recommended. <laughs>